Welcome back to my uh, little Suzuki TU250X. Um, she's still not happy. I had a bit of a busy week with well, the last couple of weeks, so I didn't upload any videos. Um, but I've done enough testing to know uh, that I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let me show you what happened last week and then we're going to recap. And hopefully, guys, you can uh, throw some suggestions by the end of this video uh, to help me fix this little poor girl. front brake was completely seized up, um, took it apart, the seals are shot, completely messed up. So luckily new ones arrived today, I got it all stripped down, uh, luckily the piston is in a really good condition, just need to be rebuilt, that's it. Let's do it now. We've got brakes. We've got brakes in the front. First time ever, because the bike, uh, when I got it, uh, the master reservoir was completely messed up, uh, screws were missing, and there was no pressure whatsoever. And obviously, later on, uh, we discovered the front caliper was completely seized up. So we've got brakes. Um, I would like to test it for a, take it for a test ride, but I really want to change the oil in that engine and the filter. Uh, I can see there is an oil in there but I don't know what quality the oil is, when it was changed last and how badly it needs changing. So before I go riding it around I'm probably gonna change the oil. It doesn't take much so uh, let's get it done. So I took it for a test ride um, last week and I didn't go very far. Uh, it goes through the gears okay and it pulls nicely from the first but it you accelerate to well 5% of a throttle and it just pops and splatters and bangs and it just doesn't go. It doesn't want to go so I went to the end of the road and I came back pretty much twice and that was the end of it. Uh, it doesn't accelerate anything above 5 to 10% of a throttle, it just it's just not happy. Let's have a look. So after all this I'm never the wiser and what is happening here well probably it's best if I show you instead of explaining this. Just a recap, the bike starts absolutely fine, it ticks over nicely and I can throttle it ever so gently, you know, to maybe, I don't know, 5% of a throttle. Um, anything over that, it just pops and bangs and it acts like it's not getting enough, enough air, I think, or, or something else. I'm not quite sure what can it be. Let's have a look. Running with a choke on, engine is completely cold, and immediately, because this ambient temperature is about 20 degrees, it's kind of warmed up and it's sticking over nicely. So I can throttle it ever so gently, and I mean ever so gently, yeah. Anything over that, this is what happens. not happy. It runs smoothly, but I can't give it any, any throttle at all. Well, 
What's going on? Let's have a look at the spark plugs. This is the oldest spark plug that was I was testing the bike for the whole week with. That's how it looks like. I didn't touch it until I removed it from the bike. And I bought a brand new spark plug and I put it in a bike, started the engine two or three times, running for no more than two or three minutes each. That's how it looks like. And now just to recap, the carburetor, right? I had a lot of suggestions and a lot of you saying that the main jet, the pilot jet is uh, clogged up. I need to clean uh, the, all the passages and to make sure it's all squeaky clean. Um, believe me, I had a carb taken apart. I'm not going to exaggerate if I say 25 times and I cleaned everything up. I took apart everything I physically can take apart. All the pilot jets, all the passages holes, one the needle grooves, everything is bang on squeaky clean the diaphragm is really good condition there's no holes no tears in it it doesn't you know it, it lifts off it it the carb inside it's good however on the previous video i did mention that the um, air mixture screw which is located where it was located over here can you see this uh it made no difference whether i turned it in and out and uh, that kind of made me thinking why does it make any difference that air mixture screw and um, i couldn't remove it i thought maybe there was a factory kind of stopper so i could i could turn it in probably five turns in and i can turn it out five turns but it would stop after five turns five full spins it would stop i couldn't get it out so i got onto the manual website and I'll, uh, I'll check that the, it's supposed to have a number of things inside so I persevered and I removed it uh, it suffered a little bit you know I have kind of damaged the uh, well I didn't damage it but you can see the scuffing on the screw itself um, what it's supposed to have it's supposed to have inside a screw then there's supposed to be a spring which it is underneath there's supposed to be a washer and underneath the washer an o-ring how this was put together it was the screw then it was the o-ring on top of it as you can see I'm gonna show you it's damaged it's split in half and on top of the o-ring was a spring so no washer it wasn't sealing properly so of course that wouldn't work so that made me think if that part was obviously messed with um, need to put it back to original condition uh, what are the other bits and bobs in this carburetor um, that are messed up as well maybe there are different parts in it I really don't know so I went online and I checked all the part numbers and part codes and I thought to myself I'm gonna order the complete new air screw and the washer and the o-ring and the spring because that may be completely damaged why wouldn't it go in and out the thread may be messed up so all them three tiny little parts or four parts uh, including shipping was nearly 50 pounds and I'm like I'm gonna spend 50 quid on that just for the air mixture screw what else in this carburetor even though it is in good condition what else has been replaced maybe the jet is different maybe the needle is different I didn't know that and uh, to be fair with you for the prices you pay for the new parts I went ahead and bought a second hand carburetor and there it is fitted and even though this carb it's um, cosmetically from the outside anyway it's uh, worse condition than the one I've got on the bench uh, this carb came from a good working bike uh, one of those bike breakers you know websites they strip strip uh, parts down and that was tested before it was shipped back to me and it is working um, and I did open it inside and inspect everything inside and it is squeaky clean and it's good condition all the parts are usable and obviously because that's put together properly the car runs better than the other one it it uh, it idles the engine fine and it accelerates to five percent absolutely fine so at this stage i've got two carbs one over there questionable one over here again squeaky clean i'm pretty 99.9 percent .9 sure this is not a carburetor problem Anyway, the carb cost me 70 pounds um, but then i thought i'm gonna spend probably more money thrown in this carb trying to rebuild it so i bought a second hand one uh, all in all i probably think it was a better choice this way we eliminate the carb it's not a carb issue there's something else in the pipeline that's causing the problem another suggestion you guys had it may be a leak around the rubber boots over here uh, so it's getting um, secondhand air where it's not supposed to um, well it isn't uh, first of all 
the the rubber boot over here that um, manifold intake it is a really good condition rubber it's squishy it's it's not cracked anywhere um, what I did to test it when the bike was running and spray some easy start all the way around here and on the other side and the ref didn't pick up the bike didn't die it is working fine it is working absolutely fine I even smear grease around the joints uh, you can still see it's there smear the grease around the joints just to make sure it doesn't leak any kind of air inside here and it isn't so that's not the problem I've cleaned all the electrical connections to make sure they uh, they good they're not corroded and um, and I've tested the ignition coil I've tested the primary and secondary resistance and I'm well within the spec uh, well the primary is slightly towards the high but it's still within the spec I remember I think it's 4.1 ohm uh, when the secondary it's about 24 and a half thousand which is well within the spec um, it should be I can't remember the exactly the spec what it should be but I've got it written down on a piece of paper and that seems to be a good working part I also checked the exhaust for any leaks first of all I can't see any carbon build up around the exhaust over here I don't feel any exhaust blowing air hot air from around the engine when it is running there was one tiny little hole when the exhaust joins over there I put some gun gum on it and it's definitely sealed and the exhaust is not blocked anywhere because when the engine is running I can feel air puffing from that hole over here as it should be so that shouldn't be a problem the thing I have no way of testing it is that little TCI unit I've joined a TU250 forum and some of the guys suggested that that can be causing the problem it can be idling okay but if it doesn't provide enough advance or whatever so when you rev the bike up it kind of does what this bike is doing um, because the spark is not happening in the right place I don't know that's another you know hundred pounds you know even second hand I need to uh, spend to test this which I really don't want to do right now if, I can, if you can guys suggest something else that can be causing the problem the only thing I haven't checked yet is the valve clearance uh, well I can do it before the end of the video or not I'm not quite sure but then again the valve clearance issue or sticky valves would rather show the problem on idle and not on acceleration am I right thinking that um, I don't know one of those things just need to check again that suggests it's running rich it's not getting enough air uh, airbox is clean uh, air filter is good I cleaned it myself I checked it myself it runs the same with or without airbox it makes no difference if anything's probably without airbox it just runs slightly worse but that's a different story uh, what would be causing that uh, having too much petrol in there or not enough air um, and then it pops in banks because the unburned petrol ignites in the header pipes probably and then you can hear the loud pop and bang and it doesn't want to run nicely but is it the valve clearance the intake valve maybe not uh, pushing enough air for this I don't know guys help me out here what do you think it's not the carb it's not the airbox it's not the spark it's not the ignition coil TCI unit or the CDI box I have cannot test without replacing it and I don't really think they either work or they don't but it may be intermittent issue I checked all the electrical connections and it seems to be fine what am I missing here guys I'm sure there are so many more clever than me guys out there and you can suggest some kind of a solution for this let me know what you think